Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about parallel processing, how to do it with the dangerous liaison. So parallel processing is sometimes known as sidechain processing, and it's best known for its use with compression. You may have heard this called New York style compression. So what better place to learn about it than in the dangerous birthplace of New York City? So we're here at Flux Studios and I've got a rig set up with a liaison, a 2-bus LT, an Apollo 16, a big rack of outboard gear, and a Pro Tool session. And I'm going to show you how to use parallel processing. Now in the past, parallel processing was a much more complicated process. There was a lot of routing involved, either with a patch bay or in more recent times with your DAW. But the liaison makes it so that all you have to do is hit a couple of buttons and turn up a knob and you've got parallel processing. Now let's talk a little bit about what parallel processing is. Essentially it requires two buses, one for your dry signal and the other for your processed signal. And the bus with the process signal gets blended in with the dry signal, essentially giving you the benefits of both the dry and the processed audio. Now this is kind of similar to if you've ever used a reverb send before. You have a dry track and you have a reverb track, and the reverb track is wet. And when you send the dry track to the wet track, you can mix a combination of the two. You get the general idea. Parallel processing works on the same theory. So let's get a real life example. I'll start with compression since that's what's most commonly used with parallel processing. Parallel compression allows me to control my dynamic range while still maintaining the integrity of my audio and keeping all my transient information. We're all familiar with the overly compressed sound that completely destroys transient information and totally changes the sound of an audio source. Now that might be what you want sometimes as an effect, but in general when using compression you're mostly just trying to get dynamic range control without ruining your track. So parallel processing allows us to do this. I have a drum stem here. Let's listen to the dry drum stem, and then we'll compress it, and then we'll do parallel compression, and we can hear the differences. So now I'm going to engage the compressor, and I'm going to totally smash it and destroy my transient information. So you can hear what that does to the drum stem. Now that's totally unusable as a regular drum stem, but it does have some things that I like. The lower level audio information is raised in level so it's easier to hear. It's a more evenly balanced level. And it makes my drums fatter and thicker, which is pretty cool. But by itself it doesn't work. If I blend it with the dry signal, I can get the best of both worlds. So let's listen to that. We'll start with the dry signal and then I'll slowly turn up the parallel processing loop and blend it in. The way I do this on the liaison is by engaging the insert on bus B and then sending it to the parallel processing loop with this button down here. And then this parallel blend knob I can turn up and get the desired amount of the effect that I want. Here's the dry drum stem. And now I'll start blending in some of the parallel loop. So that's parallel compression on a drum stem. Now keep in mind here, when I'm saying dry signal, I'm referring to bus B, which is my drum stem, unprocessed. But because the liaison has multiple inserts, you can also process this drum stem with EQ, filter, compression, totally separate from the parallel loop. You can do regular stereo bus compression and EQ and all that stuff and also add in parallel processing. But for the purposes of this video, I'm keeping that bus dry just to keep it simple. So when I say dry, I'm referring to the drum stem without any processing. So what exactly are we doing here? Let's go to the diagram. So we can see that bus B has my dry signal, but as soon as I engage my compressor on it, it's nothing but compressed signal. But if I take that compressed signal and send it to the parallel bus instead, my signal goes back to dry until I start turning up the level of the parallel bus knob. Now keep in mind that bus B doesn't have to be completely dry. You can add other outboard gear on the bus just as you normally would in addition to whatever you're doing with the parallel bus. I'm just keeping it dry for the purposes of keeping this video simple. Anything that I send to the parallel bus won't reach my output until I turn up this knob. 